Hey, second graders, Miss Shannon here with our genre of the week. This week, we will be reading stories that are realistic fiction. Now, this is a genre we have read a lot this year. So as I go over the different characteristics of realistic fiction stories, I hope it sounds familiar to you. Realistic fiction has characters that are believable. They talk, think, and act like real people. Realistic fiction has a setting that could be a real place and a plot that is believable. In some realistic fiction, one of the characters tells the story. This is called using the first person, writing a story in first person. So if you haven't figured that it out yet, realistic fiction is realistic, meaning the characters, events, and setting could be real in real life, but it's made up. Here is an example of how a realistic fiction story uses the first person. You can see that the red arrow is pointing to the word I. In a story that uses first person, a character uses I, my, and me to tell his or her thoughts and feelings. So you will know if you see the words I, my, me, or mine in a story, then it must be written in first person. For today's assignment, we will be working on page 207 in your Your Turn practice book. So go ahead and pause this video now while you go find that page in your book and then press play when you're ready to move on. Here is the story from page 207. This story is titled Reading Volunteers. Please follow along as I read out loud. My name is Derek. The children in my second grade class know how to read. Every Friday, we visit Miss Snow's first grade class. I pair up with Jack and help him practice reading. It feels good to help others. All right, second graders, if you want to go back and reread that one on your own, you can. We are now going to answer three comprehension questions about our story, reading volunteers. Number one, how can you tell that this text is realistic fiction? How do we know this is a realistic fiction story? Let's go back and take a look at our chart. We said that a realistic fiction story has characters that are believable, meaning they talk, think, and act like real people. When we look back in the story, our character, Derek, does he think, talk, and act like a real person? Is this something that could happen in real life? Yeah. We also can see that realistic fiction has a setting that could be a real place and a plot that is believable. Let's take a look back in our story. Does this story have a setting that could be a real place? Is a first grade classroom or a second grade classroom realistic? Definitely. Now the plot means uh, the beginning, middle and end of the story. Is this something that could be real in real life? Could a second grade class go and pair up with a first grade class to help them read? You bet. Some of you um, last year in first grade might have had reading buddies with um, a, another class. And so this is an example of something that could happen in real life. So I'm going to write my answer and say in a complete sentence, this text is realistic fiction because it has 
characters, a setting, and plot that could be real. So go ahead and pause as you write down your answer to number one and press play when you're ready to go on to number two. Number two asks, who is telling the story? And how do you know? Let's take a look. We know that in some realistic fiction, one of the characters tells the story. This is called using the first person. So if we look in our story, who is the one character that is telling the story? Right there underlined in the first sentence, it says, my name is Derek. So the character actually introduces himself to the readers. You can also see second graders that I circled the words my and I to show that this story is written in first person. So Derek is introducing himself and he is the one telling the story from his point of view. The story is written from Derek's point of view. So we said, Derek is telling the story. How do I know? Because he introduces himself. He actually tells us his name. Go ahead and pause if you need to and press play when you're ready to move on to number three. Okay, number three, this is the one you're going to do on your own. You are ready for it. Number three asks, how does Derek feel about helping Jack learn to read? Why do you think so? Well, to find our answer, second graders, we are going to need to go back into the text and find our text evidence. So reread the story and see if you can find the sentence where Derek says how he feels. All right, when you find your answer, you are going to write it on the line. And when you are ready and finished, you're going to take a quick picture of page 207 and upload it into the green box there on one of the last slides. If your camera is not working for some reason, you can choose option two, which means you are going to type your answers. So you have a space to type in your answers on the very last slide. And remember to click submit when you have finished. Thanks for working hard second graders and learning all about realistic fiction. As you read some of your own independent reading books this week, stop and ask yourself, is this book realistic fiction? Could it happen in real life? If it can, then maybe you're reading a realistic fiction story. See you later.